Hi friends, my name is Akhil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial, I will show you that if you have a very large table and if you want to export 50,000 records equally into multiple CSV files, then how you can do that? So let's see. So recently I got a question from one of my subscriber, Sujitra Veldram and she asked that she want to export the data into multiple CSV file but each CSV file should contain around 50,000 records. So I thought to make a video on this one. So let's jump to the demo. I got a SQL Server table email here and if you see the data it contains like ID, first name, last name, email and gender and the total number of records in this particular table are 1 million. Okay, So I want to export 50,000 records to one CSV file. So this way it should create around 20 CSV files. Okay, So let's see how we can actually export the data. What exactly we can do is that because this particular table contains an ID column, so this is identical, but in your case, it might not be the identical, okay? But at least your table should have some primary key or at least couple of columns, those can make up a primary key. So what exactly we will do? We will create an staging table and we'll generate an identity column. So let me do one thing. Let me select the ID from this table and let me use the row number function over uh, order by id and i will call this column as rn into and i will create a temporary table here temp email from email okay so what it will do it will create a new table with all the 1 million records but it will only contain the id column from the main table and then a new column rn will be created okay and the rn will be auto incremented Okay, so maybe I can do an order by RN. Okay, RN is the row number which is the unique value and it will be kind of auto incremented. So the first record will be one and the last record will be one million. Okay, in the whole table. So now this data is auto incremented in the RN. So I have already written some code here that let me paste it here and I will share all the code with you along with the data as well. Okay, and maybe you can generate the data by yourself uh, like running the while loop multiple times you know but i can share the data maybe 10000 records i can share and then you can just make more data out of the 10000 records so now what we are doing here we are checking if table details table exists then drop the table and then recreate the table details the table details column will have the id as an identity and this will be the table name and like the start id and id and the active flag so the start id for first table will be the one and the end ID for the first table will be the 50,000. So for first table, the ID will start from 1 to 50,000. And for second table, the ID will start from 50,000, 1 to 100,000 records and so on. So we are running a while loop here. So we have set the counter to 1. And then the minimum value will be start from 1. And the max value will go up to 50,000 for one loop. Okay. And then because there are 1 million records, so 50,000 into 20 will be equal to 1 million. So suppose if you want to export the data in chunks of 100,000 records, then you can change the value here, 100,000. And you can also change the values here, okay? And if your data is huge, then you can just change this counter to a higher value, okay? So now we are, what we are doing here, we are running a while loop here and inserting the data into table details. Like this is the table name and this is the minimum count and this is the max count that it should export. And this is the active flag. So in case your process fails in between, then you can resume from the same step. Okay. And then we are setting the counter to counter plus one so that the counter should run only 20 times. And then we are increasing the minimum value with 50,000. And we are also increasing the maximum value with 50,000. So let me execute this query. It was very quick. And let me copy this table name from here and paste it here. And let's see what kind of data it will contain. So now you can see that uh, this is the name of table. For example, this is the first table and it will fetch the data from ID 1 to 50,000. And you know, we will actually not pick this ID. We will pick this RN number, you know, RN ID, which will always be unique. So in case if your data is not unique according to the ID, then this will always be unique because we have generated it using the row number function. So we will select according to the row number. So it will always be unique. So we will select top 50,000 records in first scenario like where Rn between T1 start and T1 end. And for second table, we will select data like where Rn between 
50,001 and 100,000 and then 100,001 and, and then 150,000. So this, this will work so on and it will export 20 tables because we have 1 million records with us. Okay. So I think this should work fine. All right. So because we are going to make a join on the ID column of the temporary table and the ID column of the main table, then ID column should have a cluster index on it. So the main table should already have a cluster index and if it does not then you can create it and let me create a cluster index on the temp email because I just created this table. So I can write like create cluster index ix underscore pk on temp email and the column name is the id. Okay. So this will create a cluster index on the temp email and then I can make a non cluster index on the rn column because we will use the rn column in the where clause so i can call it like ix underscore rn and uh, i can provide the value rn here okay so now this will create another index so this will make the process run faster the select query run faster so now what we can do we can just join this email and temp email together and can select the data so like how the query will look like select a dot star from email this is a inner join temp email this will be b on a dot id equal to b dot id where b dot rn between 1 and 50,000 okay so this will select 50,000 records in the first time you know all right and you know next time we will change this value like next time it will select like 50,001 and 100,000 records okay so this way it will select 50,000 records in each run and then it can export the data. We will run a for each loop with ADU enumerator and we will select the data from this table, table details. Okay, so the loop will run 20 times. So we need some SSIS variables like the table name SSIS variable, the start ID, the end ID. Okay, so let's make the package. So here this is my blank SSIS package and uh, I can create few variables here. The first variable I will call it as table name and the data type will be a string and it will contain the initial value for example like t1 because this value will get from the this table now we will create an another variable and i will call the variable as start id and it will be of type integer so that's good now i will create another variable and i will call that as end id okay so these are fine now let me close this one so now let me just drag and drop the execute SQL task into the control flow window. Maybe we can call it as generate smaller tables. Okay. And I can just right click and click on edit here. And I need to make a connection to the database in which our source table exists. The email table. So it exists in the 2019 instance actually. So I can copy the server name from here. Okay. I can paste it here. The database name is the work database so i can select the database name from here click ok now inside the sql statement i can actually copy this whole query and paste it here and uh, there is one more thing that uh, i can actually also copy this particular query like uh, creating these tables so it's up to you if you want to put this particular queries inside the ssis package then you can put otherwise if you don't want to put then it's up to you so I will leave it as it is for now and I will copy this query so that it can generate the multiple tables. Okay. And I can click on okay. Okay. And now we also need to uh, declare an object variable. Okay. Because it will select the multiple tables, obg tables and the data type will be object. All right. Now let me just drag and drop another execute SQL task and I can call it as get multiple tables. Okay. And I can just double click on it and select the connection manager inside the SQL statement. We can actually select the data from this one. So if I select the data from the table details, so it is selecting multiple columns, but I need only some required columns like T1, then T1 start, then T1 end. Okay. So I need only the three columns from this table. And maybe if you want to put a clause like where active is equal to one so it will select only the active records if you want to disable some of them then you can disable them okay so i can paste the query here click okay inside result set i will select full result set then click on add here under result set name it will be zero and i will select the object variables here and then i can click on okay 
Now I need to use the for each loop container here with ADO numerator so I can configure the for each loop container here so that a loop can run through each table. From the enumerator I will select the ADO numerator then I will select the object variable here and under variable mapping the first variable that is selected is the table name if you see here the first variable is the table name the second column is that start id so i will select the start id from here the third variable is the end id so i will select the end id from here and i can click on ok now i can just drag and drop the data flow task into the for each loop container actually so i can just put it inside for each loop container and there is one more important thing that uh, if you see here so this is a whole query okay so we need to use this query inside the SSIS package so we need to create one more SSIS variable here and I will call that variable as SQL query okay and the data type will be a string here and inside the expression I need to write the SQL query so I can actually copy the SQL query from here paste it here okay and now this value like the start id and end id we need to provide through the variables so for the start id i will put double quote plus plus double quote and then i can just drag and drop the start id here okay and same will be the case for the end id so for the end id i need to put a double quote plus plus double quote and then i can just drag and drop the end id here okay if i click on the evaluate expression so it is saying that the data type dt underscore wstr and dt i4 are incompatible so the thing is because these variables are of type integer so we need to typecast them to a string because the whole query is is in a string so that's why we need to typecast it so i can write dt underscore wstr comma 50 and same thing i can do for the and id as well okay and i can click on evaluate expression so this is good here now i can click on okay so this is fine now i can double click on the data flow task and then I can take an OLEDB source because the data can be read from a SQL Server table. Now I can configure the OLEDB source and from data access mode I will select SQL command from variable and I will select this variable here SQL query okay and I can click on column so the column seems good so I can click on okay. Now I can use the flat file destination to write the data into the CSV file so I can connect the OLEDB source with the flat file destination and then I can configure it. I can click on new to create a new connection manager click ok and uh, I will call this connection manager as flat file and I need to create an empty file here so in the d files location I can create an empty file and maybe I can call the empty file as t1.csk you can call the file anything so I can browse the file here I can change the file type to csv and I can select the csv file from here so I can click on open column names in the first data row so everything seems good here I can click on ok and click on mappings click on ok so as of now everything is fine the only issue is that the flat file connection manager is hard coded so we need to make that connection manager as dynamic ok so what we can do we can copy this value from here from the connection string and I can right click and go to the properties then I can click on expressions so I can go here and then I can select the connection string property from here and then I can click on expressions and here I can paste the query okay so because we are using some backward slash here so we need to replace the single backward slash with two backward slash okay and then this value like t1.csv so I think we need to make this t1 as dynamic because t1 will come from the SQL server table yes so you can see that the, it will come from the SQL server table so now what we can do instead of the t1 we can put a double quote plus plus double quote and then we can just drag and drop the table name into this location okay so that for each table name for each iteration the value of table t1 will change okay so i can click on okay okay so our ssis package is ready now okay so let me click on start button and execute the package and it should generate the data in chunks of 50000 records into multiple files so this is generating the files okay and i can check the d files location so it is generating the data here t1 t2 t3 t4 so it will create 20 files here so I will share all the scripts used here and some basic code so you can test it in your environment. So I think the process ran fine. It has generated 20 files and the package got completed here. And maybe I can show you like opening couple of files. Maybe let me open the first file. So it should contain data like from ID 1 to till 50,000. And if I show you the another file, so it should start the ID from 50,001 to 100,000. So this is good. Yeah, so this is how you can generate the data into equal number of records into multiple CSV file. 
so i think that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on also that you will be notified every time i upload a new video thank you so much